<laughs> hey everyone, Marcus J back here. We are out of the airport, as you can see, and we heard there's an abandoned airplane in this hangar. So let's go check it out. There is a warning though. I don't know if I should go in. Kind of dark in here. Let's find some light. Look at this. You know, this does look vaguely familiar, but I don't think it's been worked on in a couple years. Let's open the hangar and get more light in here. Well, whoever worked on this hangar did a nice job because it's all insulated, even the ceiling. And it looks like it's got a heater in here. There we go, now we can check it out. So this, not really abandoned, it's just that I kind of abandoned it two years ago when we got, uh, COVID was going around and I got sick with COVID right away, one of the first people. And um, it just kind of fell off the radar. It wasn't gonna be done in time for Oshkosh that year. When I realized I wasn't gonna make Oshkosh, I just kind of quit. So, this is where we are now. Ooh, that thing is dusty. So factory, this is 200 horsepower. This one has electronic fuel injection and electronic ignition. You can see back here, it has a, the fuel pump from EFII. That's all been plumbed. The firewall is uh, covered in blue tape now because if you look close over here, you can see it's a, a polished stainless steel mirror finish. I didn't want to scratch any of it. Once I was had everything on that I needed to, I started putting tape to kind of cover and protect it. Hopefully the tape will peel off without leaving any glue. Oh, that'll be a challenge. No, I'll be cleaning that with some glue remover. <laughs> The engine, uh, actually my great co-pilot helped me put this engine together. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw a quick video in of that. Had a lot of pieces chrome plated, like the push rod tubes, the valve covers, some of these hooks. These actually might have to come off because the cowling is so low, it might not clear. This one definitely will have to come off. This one might have to come off, so those will be gone. This is the fuel rails for the fuel injection system. The exhaust is just, uh, it's not finished, it's just put together in pieces and I'll either have to have a complete exhaust made or have these all these joints welded, TIG welded. Still a little bit of work to do on the firewall. Get some more stuff added to it. Wiring harness and some other things. The oil cooler is mounted. That's good. The, some of the landing gear stuff was powder coated here and this was all rebuilt by one of the Lance Air guys, Chris Zavitson. So it's getting there. It's still a lot to do though. And it, if you can see there, the, the bottom of this was already painted. I did all of this while it was upside down because it was a lot easier working with it on its back than to lay on my back and work up over my head. So this is all painted and polished. I might throw a video on uh, either in this video or I'll make a separate one of the all the painting I did on the bottom and the body work. This was added. This is a, a basically a baggage door that I, I uh, built a frame for it. This is all carbon fiber reinforced. 
So the whole side of this part of the plane is stronger than what it was before the window or the door was cut in there. And it just latches down. It's got a nice tight seal on it. So, And the benefit to this is it, it's actually an emergency escape. If you ever, God forbid, if you ever wrecked this plane and flipped it upside down, you can't get the canopy open because you're laying on it, but you could crawl out through here. At least my scrawny little butt can. <laughs> so there's a way to get out. But the biggest thing was when you're standing here and the flaps come out to here, if you want to load baggage without this door in here, you're trying to reach around and reach into the back. It's, it's virtually impossible. So with this, you can get right in here and easy to load and unload bags. And then the inside still needs some more work here. Instrument panel needs some finishing. That I did a separate video on the instrument panel. That was really long and boring. <laughs> like 25 minutes of long and boring. But it's I've got everything situated where I want it. I've got the SLA that kind of shows how that, that whole center section is going to be. So I'm really happy with that. Just got to get back to that. This here again, the, the whole bottom is painted. And over here, this, this beautiful piece of hardware here, you got like 10 layers of covers on it to keep the dust off it. This beauty. So this is what I'm starting with for my instrument panel. And if you go back and watch the other video, this is all being redone to get rid of this step here, make everything flat and kind of rearrange stuff, get another one of these screens on this side. So go back and take a look at that video. Like I say, it's long, maybe a little bit boring, but it's, it's really in depth on what was involved with laying out the instrument panel. This one was used out of another Lance Air and um, basically, I just have to transfer everything from this into my new panel and then add the second screen. And a lot of wiring. Take a look back here. This is just bundles and bundles of wire everywhere. It's like spaghetti back here. It's crazy. That's a uh, Big step with getting the panel ready. And then what do we have back here? Uh, this is kind of where I do the fiberglass layout. This has my roll of fiberglass. I've got carbon fiber over here. This is some of the peel ply for doing vacuum bagging. Uh, I, can, I can cut fiberglass here. Usually use a fabric cutter like this. Makes it really easy cutting some of this fiberglass. That and a couple good pair of sharp scissors. I have my, I keep my composite, the resin, in a hot box here. And it has a temperature control on the side so that I can keep it at about, looks like it's at 79 degrees right now. It's just a light bulb that keeps the heat in there and it's insulated. So that runs year round to keep it at 79 degrees. And then gobs and gobs of miscellaneous stuff. The old instrument panel that came with the Lance Air that I, with this Lance Air that I purchased, it was all steam gauges and was complete. That, when I knew I was going to glass screen, I kind of parted that all out and got some money out of it because it was all certified stuff from 20 years ago. And then more fiberglass stuff here, nuts, bolts, tools, kind of where I mix paint and fiberglass. I've got Phlox, Micro, um, Cabosil. Don't really like Cabosil. And I do my paint mixing here. Got extra light when I need it. My handy spray gun. And then a little bit of a workbench here with some tools to, I don't have everything, but I have enough to make what I need here between the sanding, drill press, bandsaw. And we missed it, but over in the corner I have a metal lathe and I also have a wood lathe. Once in a while I do woodworking stuff, but and that's it. 
30 or 40 years worth of collecting tools here. And fridge for cold water. Since I don't drink when I'm working on the plane. <laughs> Got a few parts over here I need to do some repairs on. Uh, some wheel pants that need some repairs and paint job. And then, oh, I almost forgot the most important part. This table full of goodies. So this is, this is actually a wingtip uh, mock-up in 3D and SLA print to check the size. And then I can, I can go in and finish the corner to make the, the form in the computer and 3D print the size that I need to make a mold or do whatever I want. But that's, that was a 3D print to, to get the end of this because I didn't have a 3D scanner to do that. Those, those things aren't cheap. So here we have um, LED landing lights, and this actually is going to go, this is a 3D print right now of a, of a fixture that's going to go right in where this blue tape is. This is going to be cut out, this is going to go in there, and the landing light, this will fit right in here. It's adjustable, I can be able to rotate up and down get it where I need and then I just have to make the lens to go in there as well. So it should be super bright. And what else we have? Other goodies. I have electronic relays for the the uh, landing gear pump. There's that. That's what the goodies there. Flight data systems carbon monoxide detector. This shows you on the uh, G3X touch screen. This shows you, uh, th this ties into it so it shows you your carbon monoxide levels or warning, I guess, I should say. Switches, all sorts of switches for, whole box full of switches for the instrument panel and the tools to take them apart, all sorts of stuff. Nav lights, cargo light, white or red. What else? Uh, bus for the, the electronic system by EFII. And what do we got here? All sorts of plug wires, more electronics, oil vent line, I guess. Oh, there. Uh, O2 sensors. And the brains to the system, there's two of these controllers. See the second one there, and then this is a cool thing that goes in the. This is what goes in the dash. It's the little fuel injection control head. So that mounts right down in the center of that SLA that I showed in the my previous instrument panel video. So that's it. It's not really an abandoned hangar, although my plane has felt neglected for a couple years. Time to get back to work. Time to make some fun. And time to get this thing back in the air too, that would be nice. <laughs>